All right, I've got a little lactate testing today. It's been five months since I was sidelined with a stress fracture hip injury, so looking forward to getting the numbers. I've been backing off the running, obviously, quite a bit during that injury phase, but riding a ton and hoping to see an increase in the numbers that I've been tracking since, you know, about a year ago. Got 70.3 Cosimo in three weeks, so finding true threshold at LT2 uh, will be helpful to know my limit on the bike, even if I'm feeling good. Any kind of power above that wattage is an inevitable blow up on the run. So always good to use the data for one of many helpful indicators in training approach and racing. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through all of my test results, no secrets, heart rate, power, lactate values, uh, the protocol, and you know what it is why we use lactate. So hope you enjoy it. All right, lactate testing with Justin. I'm going to attempt to explain this in a very simplified way in one minute or less. Today we're doing a bike ramp lactate test. And what that is, is it's gonna give us a few indicators on what's happening under the hood in my body uh, for how we're processing carbohydrate, essentially. Lactate is created when you burn more carbs, the more lactate that's created. Eventually, your body gets rid of that lactate to create energy and clear it. Uh, but if you create too much of it, it slows you down, basically, uh, beyond threshold. And so we're looking for two points today. One is called LT1 which is the first inflection point where your body goes from being in aerobic state, primarily fat burning, to burning a ton of carbohydrates. Uh, we're burning a combination of those. And that's gonna be somewhere in here, and I'll explain what that is in a second. And then we're looking for LT2, also called true threshold, FTP, the point of no return, which is gonna be you know somewhere around here, typically understood to be somewhere between 3.0 and 4.0 millimeters of lactate. Uh, occasionally lower if you're like incredibly fit and very efficient, but basically, we're looking for these two points. And the way we're finding that is we're going to do four minute ramp tests at various powers and then take a lactate sample with a finger prick of the blood. And we're gonna find you know, that below a certain point, probably 250 watts for me, it's gonna all be pretty low, probably around the 1.0, 0 0.9 in here. And then there's gonna be this inflection point where all of a sudden it starts to kick up. That's gonna be LT1. And that, all of a sudden, you see that slope in the curve. That's where carbohydrates uh, start to be primarily introduced into the equation. And then we're going to continue on, and then it's going to be flat. And then I'm going to hit my FTP threshold, and we're going to see another jump. And we're going to call this LT2. And so over time, you can plot these data points. I've been doing this for about nine months now um, to see how efficiency changes are happening in response to different training stimuluses. Uh, it's not the end-all, be-all. It's uh, just one recipe. but you know, after you go past LT2, you're essentially dead, <laughs> uh, bonk, whatever you want to call it, uh, can't run off the bike, uh, which I found out in Ocean said the hard way when I was riding over here the whole time. And so really what you're trying to do in a 70.3 pro race is get this LT2 as far to the right as possible and then figure out how to ride right there as close to it as possible uh, and be able to sustainably run off the bike. And so I'm hoping that that's ticked up from about 310 to 325. Uh, we'll see today. So what are you pulling out? Uh, so to do lactate testing, you need a lactate meter, which is uh, about 400 bucks. Um, you need the strips, which are $2 a pop. You need some lancets to prick your finger. I'm gonna do a fresh blood prick for every single test today. A lot of people don't do that, but I find that the readings are more accurate when I do that. So my hands are gonna be all bruised. I'm gonna do two pricks per finger. And then some sterile alcohol pads to not get a infection. That's it. Okay, so the protocol is to start at 235 and then ramp up by 15 watts every five minutes. So four minutes at that wattage, one minute, take a break, spin up, then go into the next one. Um, if it's still low after 340, then I'm really fit and I'll do another one at 355, but it'll probably be above threshold at 340. Sometimes it gets to me, the things people do. Does it hurt to see all the things they put you through? Should Stay here and live like this And have to tell my kids about the things that they had
show you some of the data from uh, that I've been tracking. So tracked it in detail for like two months last year. And you can see like here, all of the data across all the different tests here. So basically LT1 right in here, 250, 260 on a good day, depends on the weather, depends on the temperature, and then threshold like somewhere between obviously 2.4 and 3.8 millimole maybe right in here, 3.2. And I was trending towards like 315. Um, so yeah, we'll look at the data from today. Sneaking in my training. 18, 18, 20. Yeah, I'm gonna use the max. The max is probably, it's a little, I guess it's gonna be a little bit of an overestimate, but I'd rather err on that side. Mm -hmm. So it's 122, 125, 128. All right, so here is the data. Beautiful looking chart. You can see the lactate values plotted against power and heart rate. As I was saying earlier, like once you get lactate mapped to wattage and heart rate, it's so close. Did you learn this at Vanderbilt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's great, dude. Mock me for being educated. That's awesome. <laughs>